Exactly. Let's have some fun with it. The Saints aren't having a whole lot of fun this offseason. You know, with Drew Brees retiring, a new day there in New Orleans. And these past couple of weeks have just been rough. Let's start with the suspension of, of David, and I hope I pronounce it right, on Yamada. Yep, that's a good. big blow. That's a big blow that I don't think a lot of Saints fans realize how big a blow it is. That that's a that's a big loss for them for the first six weeks of the season. It's huge. Uh, it, it would be it would be big in any year, but it's especially big this year because he was going to really anchor the interior of that defensive line. You know, in, in past years, uh, maybe they would have been able to rely on on Sheldon Rankins or Malcolm Brown or um, you know, somebody else to pick up some of the slack in there. Uh, you know, he's a really good player, but they had some really good depth there. And now, um, you know, Onyemata was going to be the guy. Uh, and, um, you know, they have some players they like in there. Um, you know, they like Malcolm Roach and they like Shy Tuttle and, uh, you know, some of these other youngsters who've, who've kind of played a, a part in their rotation these last couple of years. But uh, they've never had to count on those guys um, for big time minutes, a lot of snaps. Um and I, I think it's going to hurt. Um, you know, their, their run defense has been one of the best in the NFL the last couple of years. And you might have played a big part in that. He's an underrated interior pass rusher. Uh, you know, a lot of those uh, those sacks that Trey Hendrickson and Cam Jordan and, and the like have piled up. Uh, you know, and you might have played a part in that. He's, he's a very, very good defensive football player. And uh, it's going to hurt not having him for the first six weeks. And they, they played some pretty good offenses in that time, too. Yeah. And then in the back of half of the defense, you have Marshawn Lattimore. Nothing's been made official there from the league or the team, but after you know a, an arrest and, and, and a possible gun charge, it feels pretty pretty safe to assume he's going to miss some time as well. The Saints, you know, I mean, they let Jenkins go. It's just sort of been a revolving door at that other cornerback. Lattimore's been the constant over the past few years. How are they going to handle that departure if and when it comes? Uh <laughs> Uh, put something up against the wall and hope that it sticks. Um, I, I mean, you're, you're talking about two of the, the positions that, that they that were gutted the most this off season. Yeah. Um, uh, you lost two really important pieces, you know, that I just discussed in, in Sheldon Rankins and Malcolm Brown, uh, and then um, you know, obviously uh, a very very good man cornerback uh, in Janoris Jenkins. Um, I, those are all very good veteran football players. Um, and right now, I, I mean, there's nobody really has any idea who is going to be starting opposite Marshawn Lattimore in the best case scenario, whenever he is on the field. Um, and in the scenario where he is not on the field, um, I mean, you're, you're just, um, you're looking at a really weak spot on that Saints defense. Um, yeah, they were very, very good against the pass last year. I don't think people gave them enough credit. They didn't give up a single 300-yard passer all season, and they yeah. faced a lot of really good quarterbacks. Um, you know, I, I think they finished number three in pass defense in the NFL, which is a, you know, just doesn't really compute for a lot of Saints fans who are just used to seeing teams throw for like 400 on them. Uh, but yeah, I think. Even if even when Marshawn's in there, they, they're going to take a step back this year, uh, just because they don't have that top flight guy opposite him. And then if Marshawn has to sit too, especially if it's early in the season, and you know, we're, we're hearing today that maybe Aaron Rodgers is going to be in the lineup, and you think about that Green Bay Packers uh, team coming to town Week One, uh, potentially no Marshawn Lattimore, no Janoris Jenkins on the other side. Um, I, I don't really like the sound of that, to be honest. I gotta be honest with you. I'm starting to second guess myself for doing this interview as a Saints fan because you're starting to depress me a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Look, I, my, I think there's, go there's gonna be challenges this year. Like, like that's just the reality of it, right? Like, it, it's it's a it is very much a transition year, and we're gonna kind of see what they're made of. Yeah, the, the, the last 15 years, it's been you can pretty directly tie the team's success to to Drew Brees. Now, obviously, the last three years specifically, four if you want to include 2017. Um, yeah, they've they've had a very good team around Drew, and they've been very successful in the regular season. Um, I, I just think that uh, this year is going to really show us um, exactly how deep that team was, um, even though they they lost a lot of players from it. Uh, it's going to show exactly how good a coach Sean Payton is. It's it's going to be. I, I just think there's a lot more room for um, for for this year's team to uh you know, there's a lot more room for interpretation as far as what the record's going to be it could i think it could vary pretty wildly uh, a lot depends on Jameis, 
A lot depends on some of these young guys they're counting on. Um, you know, I think this rookie class is going to play a, a much bigger role than uh, the rookie classes in years past. Um, and you know, maybe maybe they hit on all that stuff like they did in '17, and, and they can keep this thing going. Uh, but I, you know, there's there's a, a much greater chance this year uh, for them to you know kind of fall back toward the middle of the pack uh, as opposed to the last couple of years, and they were kind of a Super Bowl front runner. Well, let's talk about the, what I consider the biggest. Uh... Uh, missing piece, and that's me, Michael Thomas. Put on the physically unable to perform list today. The ankle that bothered him all last year continued to bother him. Explain to me as best you can why it, he waited until this point to, to get this surgery done as opposed to not feeling right in February or March and go ahead and doing it then. Yeah, I wish I could answer for you. Um, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, you know, it just it, – <laughs> It kind of uh, – it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Uh, and I think, um, you know, we, we should be talking to uh, to Sean Payton later this week and um, you know, maybe Mickey Loomis and maybe we can get a, a better idea for how that actually happened. Uh, but, you know, we, we weren't able to go out there and see them in uh, you know, the summer for, for OTAs, minicamp, whatever you want to call it, because they didn't really have a traditional one and all were – we're able to do is ask about how he is and you know, everybody's like, Oh yeah, he's, it's good to have him back out there. And, um, you know, come to find out, uh, you know, in, in July that he's not going to be ready for the start of the season. It's, uh, um, it's kind of mystifying. And, uh, yeah, I'm hoping we get some answers for that later on this week. Saints went ahead and made a move today and signed Chris Hogan, a veteran wide receiver, but obviously that's not the same kind of thing as, as you have with Michael Thomas. You know, can a guy like Traquan Smith step up in, in, into that role or maybe a Marquez Callaway? Who, who are the Saints going to lean on here in the first few weeks? Uh, I believe his name starts with Alvin and ends with Kamara. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that poor look, guy is going to really be like, tired. I really like Traquan Smith. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, they are going to feed him a lot um, mm -hmm. uh, out of necessity, I think. Uh, and I think that probably uh, will – result in an increase in Latavius Murray's role as well. Um, but it, look, I, I really like Traquan Smith. Um, I really like Marquez Callaway. Uh, I really like Deontay Harris if he can stay on the field. Uh, that's not a, it's not a given because he's, you know, he, it, it is what he does. He's five, six and 180 pounds. Yeah. Um, but those guys are all to this point have all been very, good complimentary pieces and they've never really had to be the guy um and, and you know i know traquan's had huge games but that's when teams were doubling mike thomas and trying to take him him and alvin Kamara away uh i know they've they've been doing a lot of work with Jameis this off season, and, and i think that's that should leave some room for optimism i, I think they're going to be good players but it, it's it's not going to help when you're taking one of the the top five wide receivers in the nfl um, off the field, and uh, I, I, you just you just really wonder how how it's going to go. Um, and, and honestly, uh, it, it it almost has to be Alvin. Uh, you know, I, I think Alvin really put this offense on his back for a lot of last year when when you know Drew was out and and they were needing somebody to make a play, and Mike Thomas wasn't really a factor and. Um, I, th I think he can do that again, but they've got to they've got to get creative, and I, I think it's going to help. They're probably going to change things up a little bit. Um, you know, I think it'll probably take some of the shackles off of Traquan Smith if you can count on him to be a, a guy who stretches the field. And uh, same thing with Deontay Harris. I, I think that's going to help, but it's it's not it's not going to be uh, uh, you know optimal without Mike Thomas.